In this video, we're squeezing two Intel Arc GPUs into a compact form factor and using some clever frame generation tricks to crank out some serious performance with this little thing. I've been thinking about this one for quite some time. I've even mentioned it on the channel. I really wanted to get a small form factor unit with dual Intel Arc GPUs. Now, they're not the same GPUs, but both of these will be working inside of this PC to deliver some really great performance using something known as lossless scaling frame generation. We've got a higher end GPU that's going to do a brunt of the work. Lower end GPU is going to handle the frame generation and putting this thing together is pretty simple. It's definitely not a high-end rig whatsoever. I'm actually going to be using an 11th Gen i5 CPU and motherboard combo that I picked up used on eBay. I'll go over all the parts we're going to be using to build this thing, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. The main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA, that's going to bring the price down to $23.31. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from Settings, we're going to go to Activation Settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose Next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Okay, so the setup here is actually pretty simple. I've got two Intel Arc GPUs. Over on the left-hand side, we've got the Intel Arc Pro B50. It's a workstation GPU, actually one of my favorite new Arc cards, 16 gigs of VRAM. By itself, it's actually not that bad for gaming. Wasn't designed specifically for it, but neither was the other card we're going to be using here the Intel Arc A310. One of the lowest end Arc cards that you can pick up. They're pretty cheap and used over on eBay. I've seen them for around 40 bucks. And this is the card that's gonna be generating those extra frames using lossless scaling. Now, when it comes to the motherboard, I've got a B560 Asus motherboard. It's a mini ITX unit, 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3200, one terabyte M.2 SSD, and as for the CPU, it's an Intel i5-11400F with 6 cores and 12 threads. I bought the CPU, cooler, and motherboard a couple months ago on eBay for pretty cheap. But as you can see here with this B560 Micro ATX board, we do have two PCIe slots. When it comes to the case, I wanted to go relatively small form factor, but I also needed something that would support that Micro ATX board. These are all over Amazon. I've actually used the black one in the past. It supports a flex power supply. So we've got room down here and I'm just going with a 500 watt fully modular power supply because uh, these are some that I've been using for these small form factor builds for quite some time now. It's made by AppEva. This will support a low profile GPU, but it wasn't meant to support two GPUs. So I did have to cut a little section out of the back here. Luckily, these cases range anywhere from 35 bucks up to 60 bucks over on Amazon. When it comes down to it, if you're looking to build something like this, I mean, you could get away with that B50 just fine and get some really good gaming out of the way. But I wanted that dual Arc GPU setup just to really see how it performs. And as you can see, that bottom PCIe slot is a lot lower than the slots on the case. That's why I had to cut a little section out. But it's a single slot, low profile card that we're going to be putting there. Next thing I wanted to do was install the power supply and I'm not going to wire anything up yet. I want to get those GPUs in here so I know exactly how to route these cables. But this is a nice little 500 watt power supply. It's a fully modular setup and they're like 48 bucks. This is the fourth one that I've used and I haven't had an issue with the other three yet. Now it's time for the GPUs and we're going to go in that top slot with the Intel Arc Pro B50. I personally love this little card. I've built a small form factor unit with it. And again, it's a workstation GPU. It's actually pretty great for AI with 16 gigs of VRAM but you can still get some gaming done on it. But at those higher resolutions, it may need a little help, and that's where the A310 is gonna come into play. In order for it to fit, I did have to remove that low profile bracket. But with this card, it's got four gigs of VRAM and it draws a total of up to around 38 watts. By itself, it doesn't do great, but using it as a secondary frame generation GPU to help out that B50, I think we're gonna see some amazing performance out of this little setup. Without the bracket for that A310, I just used the little GPU bracket that I had laying around. 
It uses a magnet, so it's going to attach right to that uh, power supply at the bottom and hold everything into place pretty nicely. But as you can see, we've got it finished up. It's actually a pretty clean little build, and we've got our dual GPUs ready to go. I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro on this system, so let's go ahead and jump over there now. I've been doing a little testing with this setup, and so far, it's working pretty well. As you can see, we've got that Intel Core i5-11400F. Not a super high-end chip. I chose this because it was a really cheap setup that I was able to get. Six cores, 12 threads. We've got our two GPUs. Now, the first one here is that Intel Arc A310 low profile. Only four gigs of VRAM, and this is the one that we're going to be plugged into. We need to be plugged into our secondary GPU in order for frame generation with lossless scaling to work properly with a dual GPU setup. And of course, we've got our higher-end GPU here, which is going to be doing most of the work. The Intel Arc Pro B50. 16 gigs of VRAM. And opening up the Intel Pro graphics software, you can see we've got that B50. Resizable bar is supported by this uh, system. You definitely need it. We've got the Intel Arc A310 also. From performance, there's not much that we can do with the B50, but if we want to go to tuning on that A310, we've actually got a little bit that we could do. Now, since it's only going to be used for frame generation, I'm not even going to do like a performance boost override. We could try it if we want, but I think just stock settings, it's going to work out pretty decently. Setup with loss of scaling is super easy. And uh, it's $7 over on Steam. I've done several videos on it. We'll get into that in a second. But there's one last thing that I needed to do from uh, Windows. From Settings, Gaming, Game Mode, Graphics, Advanced Graphics Settings. And we want to make sure that our default high-performance GPU is chosen. And that's going to be that Pro B50. We don't want the A310 chosen here. We want the games to start up and think we're only going to be using that B50. So with that all set up, we can go ahead and start up a game and see how this thing performs. The first game we're going to be testing out here is Cyberpunk 2077. I'm at 1440p, ultra preset, and that takes uh, XESS to quality because we've got that Intel Arc B50. Up in the top left hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. We're running everything on the Arc B50 right now. You can see it's maxed out at around 99%, but we're not quite at 60 FPS. It's gonna be our base FPS up there in Afterburner. And moving down the list, you can also see that we've got the Arc A310 listed. We're feeding the video signal through the Arc A310 right now. So it is utilizing a little bit of it, but it's not maxed out by any means mentioned it uh, while we were doing the build there we will have to have video coming out of that secondary gpu this isn't horrible but it would be nice to be able to get more out of it and we definitely can with lossless scaling frame generation and that second gpu so we're seeing averages anywhere from like 48 up to like 53 here not bad and with a you know a vrr display you could definitely get by playing it like this but we're going to go ahead and open up lossless scaling. And keep in mind, you can always uh, set up a hotkey. We go to settings here. It's control all S. You can also manually set it if you want to. A couple of things we're going to do. Frame generation. Type LSFG. So lossless scaling frame generation 3.1. This is the latest version as of making this video. Our mode is going to be fixed. But uh, with the next game, we will test adaptive. Basically, with the fixed mode, we've got a multiplier here. And we can go 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x. This little Arc A310 is going to handle much more than 3x, but we're just going to try to double our frame rate right now. Flow scale will downscale the generated frames, and some people might notice it uh, looks a little different if you've got it down, but we're going to leave it at 100%. Instead, we're just going to be using performance mode here, which should help speed up this A310 generating those frames. Since we're going to be using a secondary GPU, the main section we need to kind of worry about here to make sure everything is working correctly is the GPU and display section. Preferred GPU, we want to make sure that we have that secondary GPU chosen. In this case, it's the Arc A310 low profile. If you use your main GPU, there's no point in, you know, having that secondary. So we've got that set. And basically, all I'm going to do is scale this. We're going to go back. And up in the top left-hand corner, right above Afterburner, you can see that we've got our base FPS on the left-hand side. 
and now we've got our FPS with the generated frames using frame generation and lossless scaling. Another thing to note here is if you look down the list, that ARC A310 is now being utilized much more. We're up to around 30 watts. It's only generating the extra frames here, and it is super smooth with this system. So it took us from that base of, let's say, 48 to 52 FPS, up over 90 FPS on average. And yeah, this is really good. Another thing that uh, with these latest versions of lossless scaling have been fixed tremendously, even with these lower-end GPUs, is our HUD. Usually, we got a little bit of scrambling going on, a little bit of ghosting with the HUD. But even with that crosshair there, you can see it's really nice and steady. This is something that the developer has been working on. And it works great, especially at 2x. Now, if we go up to 3x with this lower-end GPU, there's a chance we will get some, you know, frame generation ghosting on the sides. But I don't mind running it like this. I mean, we doubled our frame rate here using that secondary GPU. It looks great, and it feels absolutely amazing. But since we're here, let's see if we can triple the frame rate. It's really not needed, but uh, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to go back into loss of scaling. I'm going to unscale. We're going to go to 3x, so theoretically, this should triple the frame rate. We're going to scale again. Give it a second to initialize. And yeah it tripled that frame rate so let's check this out again uh, that hud real quick up against this wall it's just easier to see it over here oh wow yeah i'm not seeing it but i do notice uh, more input latency here for sure and on the corners it might be hard to see in a youtube video but there is a little bit of ghosting especially with like tight patterns uh, things on the road when you're moving quickly but this isn't bad. I, I didn't think it was going to handle it this well. A base FPS of like 50 with this game up to over 150 FPS on average using lossless scaling and that secondary GPU is pretty amazing. Now I just stick it 2x just to keep everything nice and simple. But yeah, you can see this little PC is definitely trucking right along with Cyberpunk 2077. Next up, Spider-Man 2, and on the B50, high settings, 1440p with XESS set to balanced, it does a pretty decent job, but there are areas, like you can see, where it will dip under 60. So I actually thought about using the adaptive uh, frame generation inside of lossless scaling. So we're going to pause it. I'm going to open up lossless scaling, and instead of using a fixed mode, we're going to go to adaptive. Let's do 80 FPS. See if we can get up there. We'll go ahead and scale, head back. Just so it'll keep us over that mark. Oh yeah, this is nice. And that way, this uh, little GP doesn't have to work as hard. Still had those dips, but not horrible at all. Yeah, this is really nice like this. So using that adaptive, just to kind of get over that 60 hump. Not really trying to work uh, 1,000 FPS out of a game. Does feel pretty nice on this little setup here. And as we know, with the ARC A310, I mean, it's not a super powerful card at all. So doing this could really help. And we're pulling around 31 watts from the A310 right now. And that B50 is up to that 50 watt TGP. Yeah, I could play it like this no problem at all. It looks great. Not noticing any kind of weird frame gen craziness going on here just gives us that little extra we need next up we've got borderlands 4 we're at medium 1440p and this b50 is struggling a bit at 1440 uh, with these medium settings i've also got xcss set to balance i mean it's not horrible but we're not going to hit 60 with it like this and dropping it down to 1080 on that single card is definitely the way to go but we've got lossless scaling, so we'll go ahead and use the hotkey, control alt s Up in the top left-hand corner, we've now got our base FPS and our generated FPS. And yeah, this definitely unlocks a lot. We're just at X2 right now. Uh. 
I figured we'd go ahead and test out God of War Ragnarok. And right now we're at 1440p ultra with no scaling. With some scaling, the B50 actually handles this just fine at 1440, but you can see that our base FPS is right there, a little over 50 FPS. I've already got frame generation lossless scaling up and running set to X2, and that'll bring us up into the high 90s with it. So yeah, it's working here pretty good. The last game I wanted to test is Forza Horizon 5, and I personally never use frame generation in racing games due to input latency. Right now, we're at extreme settings 1440p on that B50. I've already got frame gen enabled through lossless scaling. We're just sitting at X2. Our base is right there at 57 to 62 FPS, but with lossless scaling enabled, we're over 120 FPS, and it feels good. Usually, with frame gen enabled on a lower end system, I see a lot of ghosting on the sides because we've got a really fast setup going right now, but this is very smooth and I'm personally not noticing a ton of input latency, but I do have to say that I've played this quite a lot in uh, like cloud gaming applications, so I can kind of get used to it and figure out how this game works with a little bit of latency introduced. Overall, I think it was a success. It actually works really well. And I personally love these oddball builds. I mean, we've got two Intel Arc GPUs in this small form factor PC. And of course, it's not for everybody. You could get by building something a bit larger with more powerful single GPU and see some great performance out of it. But I love the way that this is set up. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in building something similar, I will leave links to everything I used in the description below, and it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to be it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.